is Upbeat with beatboxer, musician, speaker, and show host, Parker K. Hey everyone, welcome to Upbeat, and thank you very much for being here and for listening in today. If you would, please follow the podcast wherever you're listening to it right now. And if you like the show, leave an Upbeat review that is always super appreciated, so thank you for that. Uh, today's episode is a really fun one. It's with one of my new great friends from Clubhouse. His name is Levi Stanford. Uh, we actually, I believe, uh, connected originally in a karaoke room, just kind of a fun room, singing and hanging out with some friends on Clubhouse. It was great, but I heard his story, and his story is absolutely just phenomenal, fascinating, uplifting. It'll make you laugh. It'll make you cry. And so I wanted to have him here on Upbeat to share his story with us and to share what else he does. I know he's a motivational speaker. I know he's a musician. I know he's got over a million followers on TikTok, which is just absolutely incredible. So it is my pleasure uh, to have him here on Upbeat, and I can't wait for you to hear this interview. Let's get into it. Levi, thank you very much for joining me on Upbeat. I appreciate it. My pleasure, Parker. Happy to be here. Yeah, well, and you are uh, yet again another guest of mine that I've had on the show that I've met from Clubhouse. Clubhouse is just an amazing place to connect. Uh, do you want to share real quick just how we met on Clubhouse with all the listeners? Absolutely. It's uh, Clubhouse has so many rooms going through it, and I'm a singer, songwriter, and I saw this one random room that was, I think, top voice of Clubhouse. I'm like, sure, I might as well try it out, whatever. So I jump in there and I sing and yeah, next thing I know, you know, people are talking about my voice and stuff. And Parker mentioned some stuff. And then I went to his uh, Instagram and saw that we had a few things in common. And I was like, Parker, you know, let's get together, my man. And of course, he saw my story and wanted to bring me on. So Clubhouse, yeah. has an, it's an amazing, amazing tool for bringing people together and networking. It's awesome. Absolutely is. And I, you're right. I loved your story. Uh, I don't even remember quite exactly how we got into your story in that room but uh just some of the other moderators on that stage were asking you i guess some questions about why you chose the song you did or something like that and it just led to your story and it's so fascinating so um before we get too deep into this i'd love to share more about you with the listeners so if you want to just share a, a brief rundown of who you are what you do and maybe how you got to where you are today absolutely thank you parker so uh Five days after I got married, my, I was in an accident. So I lost my left hand, sight and eye, most of my hearing, and I pretty much almost my life. And so I woke up from an induced coma and I was inspired to become a motivational speaker. And so I, to that point, I have never, I couldn't even tell you the name of a motivational speaker. And now I found this huge push to become one. And so I was like, it was hard. It was hard trying to figure out how to do it. But the reason why is because when I woke up from my coma, I was so grateful to be alive. And so happy, even though I was in a situation that was awful. And it made me realize that how much the stuff, our happiness and our joy and fulfillment in life really depends upon our attitude and what we choose to focus on rather so much than the situation around us. Right. And so I noticed that there's a ton of youth, especially um, like high school age, middle school kids who just are lost and they're feeling dark. And especially right now with COVID going on. And so I was inspired to go and try to inspire the youth and help them to understand that what they're going through right now is only a small little moment. And if they can keep pressing through it, that they have a whole life ahead of them, right? And so I have pursued that and I'm now a motivational speaker. I travel around, mainly speaking to high schools and middle schools. Um, COVID kind of shut down the traveling in-person stuff, but I took it to online. So I do online speeches as well. And my whole life, I've always loved music. Music is my number one passion. And so I kind of combine the two in my speeches. I'll perform a song or two like that because my lyrics and my songs are really focused on an inspirational message and trying to inspire through music. So I combine the two. And then of course I put out an album in 2018 and I've just been doing that ever since. And I, I'm loving it. It's it, it's really fulfilling for me, but also to see that I, that my story has an impact and something that was awful to become, you know, a walking living pirate. Um, and that I can take this and use it to help other kids get through it. It's been, it's been a journey and one that I love so much. Awesome. Yeah. And those who are watching on, on YouTube will see 
uh, that you've you've got your name as Captain Hook. <laughs> so <laughs> that's pretty clever. That's awesome. Gotta if you don't embrace mind, the pirate life, <laughs> right? And it's a good message too, in and of itself, just to embrace, you know, what what the situation is and to run with it. Um, if you don't mind, just kind of breaking down that story for us, like what happened that day and you can go into as much detail as you'd like to uh definitely don't feel like you have to but we <laughs> are all ears here on upbeat absolutely well i'll try to keep it kind of short because i usually if i tell the full story with like every detail it's going to be like a half hour long there's a lot <laughs> that went into it so the short version is it was a pyrotechnic accident but whenever i tell people that there's always kind of the stipulation behind it like oh you were just messing with fireworks you're an idiot yada 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 and, and i get it right but there's a whole story behind that so my entire life one of my many passions was explosives and not in the kind of like i want to watch the world burn and i'm a crazy kind of person i just <laughs> i love the science right so you can mix these chemicals together and they can create these reactions that are really powerful you can mix you know aluminum and copper and they make different colors and I, I loved it in fact i loved it so much i was actually considering becoming a demolitionist for a career because it just fascinated me so i've been working on this waterproof explosive for quite some time and basically it would be two and a half pounds worth of this explosive that i would lower into a body of water and i was originally going to have electric cables going to it so that i can get a far away distance, touch the cables to a battery, have it go off. And it was supposed to shoot this huge geyser of water up into the air. And I just thought that would be so cool. Now, my wife and I, we got married on uh, July 10th, 2015. And then just five days later, so we got married on a Wednesday and then the following, or sorry, we got married on a Friday and the following Wednesday, we were having this big family get together and we were having this dinner in celebration for um, my nephew's adoption. And so we're all kind of hanging out. And then my brother says, Hey, why don't we gather up some of the family and go out to this popular swimming spot just outside of town and go bridge jumping? Because there's these old abandoned train bridges that sit right on the edge of a reservoir. So you can jump off these bridges into the water. And a lot of my family that were there were from out of town. So we said, yeah, sure. And then this light bulb goes off and I was like, hey, why don't you show off that explosive? And you can shoot these guys or water up. Everyone will think it was, it's cool and it'll be great. So I went to go get it all ready, except the stores that had the cables I needed for the ignition were closed. So I was in a rush and I thought, well, no, I have to show my family this. I want to do it now. And instead of kind of slowing down and being like, no, you need to wait till you have those cables. I thought, well, if I just get a really long burn fuse, I can light it, throw it in the container, screw on the lid, toss it in the water. I'm fine. It's got like two minutes worth of burn time. Right. So we get out to these bridges and my family. So it's my wife, my brother, his wife, my sister and my 15 year old niece. They're all standing on the bridge. And this is like a rickety bridge. It's made out of the old ra uh, railroad trusses. And some of them are missing. There's nails and all that stuff. So I get across this bridge and I jump down the river embankment, kind of onto the mud flats. And I get the explosive already. And I tell my brother, I'm like, all right, let's get this on film. So he starts recording. I light my fuse and I throw it in the container and I screw on the lid. And just as I pull my hand away, it goes off. So wow. two and a half pounds worth of this explosive goes off pretty much by my face. The force of the blast was so strong, it actually blew the clothes off my body and fractured my orbital bones in my face. So it was really powerful, but it didn't knock me out, which is a blessing because if it did, I would have died for sure. So this thing goes off. I'm laying there looking around, you know, thinking I have to be dead. There's no way I just survived that. And all I could hear was my family screaming because from their point of view, all they saw was a cloud of smoke. They didn't know if I was alive or dead on the other side. And I didn't feel any pain yet. And I just remember thinking, well, I'm dead. I have to be dead. I'm having an out-of-body experience. And then all of a sudden, this huge rush of pain came in. And I just remember taking a deep breath and being like, I'm alive. I'm alive. And I start looking around and I notice my left hand is gone. There's nothing left. And I just remember thinking, this can't be happening. How am I going to play guitar? How am I going to do this? And it was insane and surreal to see that. And then I remember thinking, well, if I don't get out of here, I'm going to die. So I tried to stand up and I collapsed. My legs were shredded. Like I said, the force of the blast was so strong. It did a lot of damage to me. And so I couldn't move. And so my family, they jumped down there and they raced after me to come and help me. And my brother, he decides that they got to get me out of there. So they were going to try to carry me all across these mud flats, up this huge embankment, get across the train bridge to my truck to get me to the hospital. 
And so they start carrying me. And of course I weighed 220 pounds and I was covered head to toe in blood. So they kept having to put me down or I would slip and whatever else. And so they got me about halfway up the embankment and my sister, she was behind me with most of my torso and she slipped and just fell and burst into tears. And she said, Levi, I can't, I have no strength left in my body. I just, I can't do it. I'm so sorry. And in that moment, I had this impression that said, stand up. And I told my family I was going to try to stand. And so my sister, she put her hand on my back and gave me one big shove. And I was able to stand up and get up this embankment as though nothing was wrong with me. Just one of the many, many miracles that happened. Now I'm standing looking at this death trap of a bridge. I mean, it's probably around 80 feet long. Like it's, it's a massive bridge. And I'm thinking, great. I got this far only to die trying to get this freaking thing. Like I was like, no, but I knew it had to be done or I was going to die. So I threw my arms around my sisters and I just started walking, praying that I'd make it across. And by the time I started walking, I had so much blood in my eyes, I could barely see. And so I'm praying that I'm not going to fall between the trusses or anything. And another miracle took place. I was able to get across that bridge as though nothing was wrong with me as every step was exactly where it needed to be. Now I get to this point, there's a truss missing. So there's about a four foot gap and there's no way I could get across it. So my brother decides he's going to back my truck up onto the bridge with my tailgate down so that it would cover up that gap so I could roll into the box of the truck. Well, of course, everyone's adrenaline is flying, right? And so my brother is focused more on trying to back the truck up and not go off the bridge that he's not really seeing how far he's backing up. So I'm standing there waiting and all of a sudden to add a little insult to injury, my brother hits me with the tailgate and kind of bumped me. And I'm like, oh, and everyone's like, stop, stop. And so I roll into the box of the truck and my wife jumps in there with me and everyone piles into the cab. And then we take off trying to meet up with the ambulance. Now we're in the middle of nowhere. So I'm on a dirt road and I'm in the box of this truck, just getting bounced around because we're flying and I was missing a hand. Like I was in so much pain. And I just remember asking my wife, I said, Amy, do I still have my face? Cause I thought the whole left side of my face had been blown off. So he says, yes, Levi, you still have a face now. Uh, and then I asked, <laughs> I asked another question and I'll kind of tone it down a bit here, but I basically said, Amy, I've got to know if we're still going to be able to have kids. She says, yes, Levi, everything's good. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to still be able to have kids so I had to know, you know, um, but it was good because in that moment, it, it kind of broke the ice a little bit. It was such a tense situation that that it was kind of a joke that kind of calmed the mood a little bit. But then realizing my situation, I, you know, seeing that I'm missing a hand and the damage that had been done, I just remember thinking, this is it. I'm not going to make it out of this. So I turned to my wife and I said, Amy, I want you to know that if I don't make it, you have my blessing to be remarried. I don't want you going the rest of your life not knowing if I would have been okay with it. So you have my blessing. Essentially, I was saying goodbye because I thought for sure I was going to die. And my wife, being the amazing woman that she is, she said, Levi, shut your mouth. And then backhanded me. No, I'm just kidding. She didn't. But she said, Levi, what are you talking about? You have so much to do in this life. You're not going to die. There's so many people you're going to inspire. And it was just such a huge strength for me in that moment. Now they get me to the ambulance and get me to the hospital and they're trying to get me stabilized so that they can actually fly me to a hospital two hours away, uh, the nearest city. And when they sedated me, I just remember my, all my pain being flushed out. And I had this feeling like, this is it, I'm going to die. And I just remember thinking that and just thinking, this is it, my life is over and my existence has now ceased to exist. And that is it. And in that moment, when I thought for sure I was dying, I had this just blanket of love and peace come and wrap its arms around me. And I just remember feeling so at peace. And I let myself go to it because I didn't want to go back to the life that I was going to have to lead with missing a hand and the pain that I was in. And I just accepted it. And then all of a sudden I started thinking about my wife and I'm like, we just got married. And I started thinking about her having to mourn her husband of just five days. And I started thinking about my family having to mourn their brother and their son. And I just remember pleading and saying, please, please don't let me die. Just give me 10 minutes if that's all I get to go back and say, I love you and say my proper goodbyes, but please don't let me die. And I just remember hearing this voice calling out and it was my wife. And she's saying, Levi, you're waking up. You're doing so good. You're waking up. 
And I open up my right eye. I can't see out of my left. I have shrapnel damage to it. But I remember opening my eye and seeing my wife standing there just smiling back at me. And in that moment, I felt like I'd been reborn. I just had this, I can't even describe the amount of gratitude I felt. And I was just like, I'm alive. And I wanted to yell it at the top of my lungs, but I had this breathing tube shoved down my throat. So kind of made it a little bit hard, but I was so, so happy. And later I found out. So that whole moment for me felt like 45 seconds where I thought I was moving on, but I was actually sedated for a whole week. And so my wife and I kind of have this dark joke where it's like, yeah, it was the shortest week of my life. And she's like, well, it was the longest week of mine. You know, there was a few days where <laughs> they weren't sure if I was going to make it or not. So it was, it was pretty scary, but it, like I said, it really put things into perspective for me when I woke up and, you know, I just remember everything from that moment on, I was like, sitting in my hospital bed and I would see the sun setting. And I just remember bawling being like, I'd never thought I'd see the sunset again. And just things like that. But a lot of things we take for granted, but anyways, that's my story basically in a nutshell. And so I, I just remember feeling after I woke up that I need to inspire people. And so that's where I am today. Wow. That's quite the story, man. And I'm sure people <clears throat> listening in have, have, got the chills. <laughs> They're like, Oh my gosh, like that's insane is a crazy story. But what would you say other than maybe your, your wife and your family who were there, what was it that just like really pulled you through that experience? Cause it's, it's more than just like someone was helping, like trying to physically move you. Like those, those were some miracles that were happening, man. So, right would love to hear about like what pulled you through that. Well, I mean, I, like there was a whole spiritual side to it. Um, and I don't know how deep you really want me to go. Um, but basically I, I know that I was helped on the other side. Um, there's no way I could have done what I did, uh, to be able to walk up that embankment and can, people can say it was adrenaline and whatever else, but my sister shared with me after my accident, she said, Levi, I got to tell you something. She said, I've never felt this before, but when I pushed on your back to get you to try and stand up, she said, it was as if I was handing you off to someone. She says, I could feel somebody there pick you up and get you up that embankment. And she's just like, I've never felt that before. It's crazy. But I know in my, I know without a doubt that I had some serious guardian angels getting me across that bridge, getting me up that embankment because everything, and everything went lickety split like all everything was timed out perfect for me to survive like for example so the ambulance where we were um we were on this so i live in Cartston, which is shares a border with one of the largest native american reserves in all of canada and so my niece she when she called the ambulance she said my uncle blew himself up on the reserve i need someone to come and help him so they didn't know where they were going the ambulance was just taking off to the nearest reservation and so we were on this dirt road and we drove onto the highway 10 seconds, 10 or 15 seconds before the ambulance was about to pass. So if I would have been 10 or 15 seconds later, I would have missed the ambulance and would have died for sure. And so it's like everything was timed perfectly for me to be able to survive and get out of there. And so it's, it wasn't just my family. It wasn't just my will to live, but I believe that I had someone on the other side, multiple people on the other side helping me out and get through that because there is no way no way I could have done that. Yeah. Well, and what was it like, um, you know, medically and the recovery, like, were there ever any complications or were, was it just like a miracle team of doctors and like people that were able to help in that regard too? Uh, a bit of both. I mean, for about three days, the doctors weren't sure if I was going to be able to make it. Um, my lung collapsed in surgery. Like it was, it wasn't looking so good, but then all of a sudden, on about day three, everything started turning around for me. And it was just, it was perfect, perfect timing to have. Well, especially because, uh, so in carts in the small town that I live in, there's one guy, uh, the doctor who deals with emergencies like this. So trauma and stuff like that. And there's only one doctor specialized in that. And he travels from town to town. And it just so happened that he was on call that day. So he was there to help stabilize me, to get me up to Calgary. So it's like, there's all these little things that lined up so well that it can't be a coincidence, right? That I, I believe wholeheartedly that it wasn't just coincidence that for, you know, one thing after another to happen the way it did, 
there, I had some higher power looking out for me, whatever people believe that higher power to be. Yeah. Well, and that's, I mean, first of all, it's fascinating, but second, another thought, just piggybacking off of what you just shared. Um, do you think it was meant to be for you to go through that? Or do you think, uh, it was an accident? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, so like I said, I, I played with explosives. Well, not played. I, I don't like to use the word played because it kind of makes it seem like I was being ignorant with stuff. Um, I wasn't being ignorant. I was just uh, being careless. So I got so comfortable with explosives that this was bound to happen. And there was actually a lot of instances in my life before where this sh should have happened. So I actually was working on this waterproof explosive way before this happened. And outside of the town that I live out about 30 minute drive, there's this whole entire crowned land, which means that you can go quadding on it and stuff. You don't have to pay. It's owned by the government. And so I had initially planned on doing this same explosive um, in, out in this area that is a 30 minute ATV ride. So you have to drive out there and then you have to get on an ATV and go you know, through the force and everything until there's this pond that I was originally going to test this out at. And same thing, uh, I didn't have the cables and I was like, well, I'll just, I'll just throw a, you know, long fuse in there. It's going to be fine. And on the way out there, the tire blew on my trailer. These are brand new tires I put on my trailer for my quad trailer. They blew and I didn't have the jack for some reason. And I couldn't find all the stuff. So by the time we got everything fixed, we had to run to this house. It was like three hours later. And so I just like said, you know what, I'll just do it some other time. And looking back now, I see, holy smokes, if I would have, if that wouldn't have happened and I would have set it off out in the boonies like that, I would have died for sure. There's no way I could have ridden a quad back for that to happen. So timing wise, I think personally, you know, God said he's going to do this. He, there's nothing I can do <laughs> to stop him. He's going to do this. But everything was perfectly planned out that I survived. And so I see a lot of blessings coming from that, knowing that, yes, this was supposed to happen to me. And, and not only that, and it sucks because I just remember laying in my hospital bed thinking, well, crap, how am I going to play guitar? How am I going to do this and this and this? But I kept pushing through it. And now the lives I've been able to touch because of this accident, because I've been able to turn it into something good, far outweigh the negative. And so, I mean, if you would have asked me then, I would have said, yeah, I want my hand back, you know, but... I've seen so much blessings and so much good come from it that I wouldn't take it back for a second. And it's kind of weird to think, but I mean, honestly, I've even forgotten what it's like to have a left hand, but uh, I, yeah, I wouldn't take it back for a second. Well, and I'm just, this is a curiosity question, but are there different kinds of, of, I guess, attachments that they can, that they can help you out with, or did you specifically choose the one that you have for a reason? Um, I, I did choose it for a reason because it's only 10 grand versus a hundred grand. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Basically. Yeah. 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 So they do, they have hands like prosthetic hands that look like Luke Skywalker's hand. They can do all these things, but they cost around, yeah, 90 to hundred grand and I'm oh not covered for those. Right. So yeah. this one, um, it costs $10,000 and it's the most basic one you can get and it's a hook, right? So I can open and close this hook and I'm covered up. I only have to pay 500 for it because the uh, Alberta government covers the rest, thank goodness. But yeah, it really comes down to, holy smokes, I can't afford it. But that being said, this thing, I wouldn't trade this for one of those hands because the robotic hands, a lot of the times they'll break down or they have issues. But this thing, like I do a lot of welding. I actually make my own attachments for this. So I have like a hamburger flip flipping attachment, hot dog roasting one. Like I make all these different attachments. I was actually welding one day and I welded my hook to the table. And it's just like, I ground it off and kept working, right? So it's, this thing takes so much abuse and it's, I love it. So, and I've gotten really good with it. So, but yeah, like you said, there are, there are different prosthetics and stuff, but it's really kind of personal choice, really. I've found yeah. that for my lifestyle, this works the best, but some other people might love the hand or some people want something that looks real. So they don't get the attention. I get a lot of attention walking around with this thing. So it really is personal choice. I kind of find. Got it. Yeah. That's cool to know. I mean, that was just a curiosity thing, but I want to get into, um, what you're up to now. Like what is your favorite thing to speak about? Like, what do you think like your whole purpose is from here on out? Really? It's, it's resiliency. So, I mean, right now I am doing the speaking and stuff, but like I said, my number one passion is music. 
And if I could, I would just be touring around performing my music and stuff. But uh, unfortunately, right now, it's, it's really hard to pay the bills. So I use speaking as a means to not only inspire people, but also to to pay the bills, right? Because um, family's got to eat, right? But uh, it through my music and my message, it is resiliency. So I just, I mean, if I could sum up my message in, in a couple of sentence is, sentences, it would be, whatever you're going through right now is a small moment compared to life, right? It really, it is so insurmountable to the rest of life you get to live. And so often we get so focused and stuck in the moment and all the negative things that are going on that we forget that we have like 30, 40, you know, even 10 years left in life, right? And so my message is please do not give up the, um, the chance to live an amazing life for what you're struggling with in the moment. It'll be but a small moment. And if you can endure it well, you get a beautiful life ahead of you, right? And that's what I realized when I was going through my accident is, you know what? It feels like it's a big deal. Like I'm missing a hand. I can't move my right hand and all this stuff. And it was, it was a big deal. But three years later, you know, I was back to living a normal life. And so, so many times we get caught up and think, you know, this is never going to go away. COVID has ruined my business. I've this, this, and this, how am I going to get through this? But if you just keep moving forward one step at a time, focusing on things you can control, two, three, maybe four years later, you can get back to finding your groove, getting back to living a normal life, right? And so just don't give up in this moment because it seems too hard. You have an amazing life ahead of you. So that's basically the big message that I try to instill in the youth when I speak to them. And I mean, there's obviously a lot more that goes into that. It's not just a matter of focusing on the positive. That's not going to heal all your problems. You know, there's a lot of things you have to do on a daily basis. Um, a lot of, you know, controlling your thoughts and different things like that. A lot of techniques you can use on a daily basis to help pull you through. But uh, basically the majority of my message, that's what I'm focusing on. Got it. Absolutely love that. And is that how you're using Clubhouse too? I love I love talking about Clubhouse. So I'm I'm going to bring that into here too. But uh, <laughs> what what I guess in what way are you using Clubhouse to do that? It's uh, it's it's an amazing app, man, and it's it's incredible because it gives people a voice that otherwise wouldn't have one, right? And so I'm using Clubhouse as a means to, like I said, inspire people and give them that message as well. And so I'll. I'll go in rooms where they're talking about overcoming adversity or anything like that. And they'll jump in and I'll share a little bit about my story and kind of give tidbits of information to help people out and whatever else. And because you don't know, there's always someone in the room, you know, and especially in today's society with social media and Instagram, everyone has this mask, right? We all wear different masks. We have this mask that shows, oh, I'm, I've got life together. Everything's perfect, right? And so we sign on to Clubhouse or Instagram with all these kind of preconceptions that everybody's doing great everyone's doing fine and you look at their bios and all they have listed is all the things they've accomplished in life so a lot of time people think well nobody needs this you know they're doing great but everybody's struggling everybody has something and you know my message might not impact somebody but somebody else might need to hear my message that it's just like wow i really needed to hear that today and so i use that in clubhouse just sharing as much as I can, trying to help as many people as I can. And then also a lot of the karaoke and singing rooms, right? People hear me sing and they get interested and look at my story. And then next thing I know, I'm on a podcast with Parker. So <laughs> it's, it's great. Absolutely. Well, um, I love a few things that you hit on there, but one thing too, I've realized there's a kind of this stigma that if you're a moderator, you're a quote unquote expert. And oh my gosh. And I really don't like that because I, I mean, I've been a moderator in a bunch of rooms and the people hosting the room will say like, Hey, to anyone in the audience, or, or if you have a question, like we'd be happy to help you. And I'm like, well, what if I have a question? I'm a moderator, but like, <laughs> but like I have a question cause I'm not an expert in this, you know? All right. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, it's a good way to wind down, let loose with some karaoke and stuff. Um, have you, have you been able to find any other, I guess, speaking gigs or anything from it? Cause I know people are really, you know, finding more and more opportunities from clubhouse right. too. Um, not so much speaking engagements as like, I have been on a few podcasts that I've gotten onto because of clubhouse and, uh, music wise, I've gotten my music in front of people who I 
would never have the opportunity to. And that's, so if you're a musician, Clubhouse is amazing because there's producers and stuff who hold these karaoke rooms. So you jump in there and thinking, you know, no big deal. And then you find out that a lot of the moderators listening are like huge in the music industry. <laughs> big deals. And, yeah. and it's like, what other platform gives you that opportunity? Right. And so I've been finding a lot of success with my music on there and people, you know, opportunities that way opening up for me. But, uh, you know, I, I've kind of, because of that, I've kind of focused more on the music rooms, but, um, yeah, I'm, there's a lot of opportunity there and a lot of, and on the same thing, you know, there's always a yin and a yang to everything, right? You know, there's a lot of good stuff to clubhouse, but a lot of people got to really be careful. Like I said, because there's a lot of people on clubhouse who are really there just to sell you. They come off as in, like being genuine and wanting to help, but really they're there to sell you a product or a program or something like that. Right. So you just really have to be smart using any app, right? There's always somebody out there, you know, a, a wolf in sheep's clothing, just trying to appear like they're helping you out, but they just want your money and you just got to be really smart. If someone's saying, Hey, I can bring your business to a next level. Just give me, you know, 20 grand. Do not do it, please. You know, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I've been there, you know, people promise all these things. And when you're stuck in a situation of, you know, you're desperate, you need money right now or whatever else. And these guys are promising you to the whole world. It's easy to give in because especially because they're verified on Instagram or something like that, that doesn't mean a dang thing. I've seen so many people on clubhouse fall for that trope of they're verified. They have all these followers. They're taking pictures with somebody that is famous, right? They, they must know their stuff. No, do your research, Google them, try to really figure it out before you give anyone any sort of money because it's a dark road to pass down. So, amen. Yeah, I I absolutely love that message as well. I, the way I was just talking about this the other day with some friends, um, the way I like to look at it is it's it's a good and a bad thing, but it's big fish and little fish swimming together in the same tank. Right. And um, you know, sometimes you get brought up into some really sweet opportunities you couldn't ever have had. And other times you get completely swallowed up and screwed over. Yeah. So <laughs> you definitely just got to know which big fish to trust. <laughs> oh, exactly. It's just don't give in to everybody who's offering something. You just got to be smart about it really. And, uh, you know, don't let your desperation kind of take over your decision-making because I've been there and I've made some pretty costly decisions in my life just because I, I needed money right now. And yeah, so just be smart about it really. Yeah, definitely. Well, Levi, where can people go to get your music and to support you in, in that way? So I actually put out an album, like I said, in 2018. So if you want to, you can, uh, it's on every platform, Spotify, iTunes, everything like that. And it's got 17 songs on it. And uh, I haven't really picked a genre yet. Um, I'm leaning toward country right now, but that album that I put out is, it'll be like listening to a mixtape. If some of your viewers know what that, <laughs> know what those were back in the day, but it's got everything. It's got some rap. It's got some country. It's got some rock. It's got, because I love, I love all music. And so even though there are kind of different genres on there, it is all me and you get that sense throughout the album, but it's, yeah. So if you want to support me, go check out those platforms. Just look up Levi Stanford and my album is Headstrong. And like I said, all my lyrics have really good stories and messages that are uplifting and hopefully gets you thinking and inspiring. And then also, if you want to get a hold of me to book me for speaking engagements or anything, I do online speaking engagements as well. And you can just do that. My email is Levi at Levi Stanford.com or just go to my website, Levi Stanford.com. And that's Levi Stanford, like the university.com. So awesome. Sounds great. And I'll make sure I link up those things too in the description and on the website and all that stuff. Um, I've got this quick little segment I do at the end called the upbeat seats, uh, where I just ask a few kind of more lighthearted upbeat questions but levi what makes you upbeat Oof. life my core values music and my wife who don't take no crap from nobody and keeps me <laughs> keeps me focused <laughs> but music you know honestly man the one thing that i love more than food and everything else um is music besides my family my family is number one but music oh man i Honestly, I, when I wake up, I got songs going through my head that I'm writing and stuff to when I go to sleep. And so music is really my passion. What keeps me going. 
what uh is your favorite music to listen to i know it's hard to choose but (laughs) if people were to hear me sing they they think this is weird but hard rock right now um i love hard rock so things like shine down or breaking benjamin i was a 90s kid so like some 41 old lincoln park the first two albums i i love that stuff i love lincoln park big so time. good yeah you uh, know i actually had tickets to see them live and then the night before chester bennington broke his ankle and so they canceled the tour oh, and wow. you know you know rest his soul now I'll, I'll never be able to see him live and so i was so choked i was so upset but yeah fantastic band I'm definitely going to turn on a Linkin Park song right after this. <laughs> now, oh, yeah. I'm like, now I'm like ready to listen to that. Got me hyped. So good. Um, who is your number one influence or inspiration? For rap, definitely Linkin Park. M. Shinoda. That I love the way his vo- the tone of his voice for rap. And Eminem, his lyrical style. Those are my biggest influences for rap. Um, Shine Down is my number one for rock. And uh, country, just a little bit of everything, you know. It's, I got a deep <laughs> voice for country, so uh, you know, got a little bit of twang in there. But <laughs> um, but uh, I'm in honestly, Idaho, so I know I know country, man. <laughs> you know, one or two songs, eh? Yeah. Oh, have you been to Idaho? Yeah, believe it or not, I have three sisters. So I have two sisters that live in Pocatello, one in Twin Falls, and a brother in Sugar City. So. Uh, Okay. Yeah. Right yeah. outside of Rexburg. <laughs> so I lived in, I mean, I've lived in Idaho almost my whole life, but grew up in Pocatello and then went to college in Rexburg by Sugar oh, okay. City. So right. yep. the good old BYU I do, eh? Yeah. Except I didn't get the I do part of it. <laughs> <laughs> Still working on that part. <laughs> oh, well, one day, right? <laughs> um, what is your favorite TV show? Oof. It's a good question. That's a hard question. I'm more of a movie person, but uh, okay, TV we show. could do movies too if you want. Movies, ooh, I've got too many to name. Inception, Inception's always been one of my favorite, just because it was so unique and just pioneering at the time with the effects. I remember walking out of the theater, being like, "What just happened?" Mind was blown. Um, yeah, Inception's they have a, a good great, one. Great, great soundtrack too. Oh, seriously, yeah. Uh, what's another? I just watched one recently that was actually really good. I can't think of the title. I just, I don't know, I'm sitting late at night, I'll just watch Netflix, whatever comes up, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just say Inception for now is awesome. <laughs> awesome. Favorite social media platform? Uh, probably <laughs> Clubhouse. I think Clubhouse for the value I've been getting from it, but I'm most successful on TikTok, which is kind of random, but uh so it's hard. I'm most successful on TikTok. I enjoy TikTok, but really Clubhouse. I love, I love Clubhouse and what it's been doing for me. And YouTube. If I had time, I'd be making YouTube video day, YouTube videos all day, every day. But I just don't got the time for it right now. But Clubhouse, yeah, big fan. We'll have to do a TikTok duet or something because I'm on TikTok. I'm not like super successful on there, but I love TikTok. <laughs> well it's such a weird app like i have a million followers but that doesn't mean a dang thing for your videos the algorithms don't care like i'll put a video up and it'll get a million views and then i'll put one up the next day and i'll get two thousand. right like it's all yeah. over the place but uh it's an interesting app I'm trying to figure it out yeah very cool i'm gonna go i don't think i followed you yet so i'm gonna go follow you everyone listening go follow him on tiktok <laughs> and start <laughs> doing duets and spreading the love uh, Levi, Absolutely. I'm going to close this out. Uh, I do a quick beatbox with your name in it. So we'll, we'll oh, do that man, real quick. Oh, man, looking forward to it. I'm going to put, I'm actually going to do your name and Captain Hook in it. Let's see. Heck yeah. This is for Levi. This is for Levi. This is Levi. Think of the Levi, Levi. Captain Hook. Captain Hook. Awesome, dude. That was sick. I I've love got it. it. Man. I I always 
uh, share with the guests. I've got it recorded on my laptop on this end because I know on Zoom it kind of cuts out. So, <laughs> so you'll be able to hear the full thing uh, when this goes when this goes out. <laughs> that's awesome. That's that was that's so dude. That's so incredible. Like I can kind of do a little bit of that, but not to that extreme. That is awesome. <laughs> well, thanks Levi for being on Upbeat. I appreciate you. My pleasure, man. Thank you so much, Parker. I appreciate it. So there you have it, my interview with Levi Stanford. Uh, We'd love to connect with you. You can find me on my website, parkercane.co, parkercane.co, and Levi on his website, levistanford.com. If you enjoyed this episode or got value from the episode, please share it with a friend and leave an upbeat review that is always much appreciated. You guys are the best. I'll see you next week. This is Upbeat with beatboxer, musician, speaker, and show host, Parker K. Subscribe at parkerk.co.